Hi guys, um, I hope that you're all well, hope that you're all blessed. I'm um, just doing a short video just to encourage one or two individuals again. Um, and this time I have a friend with me um, and a, a person who loves God. Um, and I thought I'd get him on to sort of um, share his, his views and his experiences that, that I'm sure will, will help um, one or two of you guys who are, are listening. My friend Jay, how are you? I'm well, thank you. How are you? You good? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm not bad. I'm not bad at all. Um, yeah, um, you are an individual, right, who, who's been a Christian for how long was it? Eight years. Eight years now. Yeah, eight years. Eight years. Can you tell us a bit about you know, any experiences that you may have had with regards to healing? Yeah, sure. So I would say that, um, you know, in terms of healing, one of the first things I personally experienced as a Christian is to be, to be set free uh, from the powers of darkness or the powers of Satan, if you will, into the kingdom of God. And um, this, uh, I had this experience when I gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, the moment that I called upon the name of Jesus, you know, Jesus literally delivered me. Uh, you probably say, well, what do you mean? You know, for me, I, when I confessed the name of the Lord, I had this supernatural experience. It was evident to those that were around me. Um, so like, you know, I prayed this thing that we call the sinner's prayer. And this basically is a prayer of just surrendering and dedicating your life to follow Jesus Christ. So I literally felt something like electric go down my right and my left hand and my hands went like, like this and they shot out straight and my legs kicked out straight like this. And, and that moment I started to speak a language that I'd never learned before. And in my head, I'm thinking, what on earth is going on? And I tried to say Jesus and I could not say his name uh, because in the Bible it says it is impossible to say Jesus is Lord except by the Spirit of God. So in this experience, Jesus was setting me free from whatever it was, uh, setting me free from the kingdom of darkness and, and, you know, the grip that Satan had on my life and, you know, demons and evil spirits or whatever, uh, just to be released into the freedom of Christ. And uh, so for me, like, I would say this was the first sort of miracle, if you will. Uh, the same happened for my brother. My brother, man, like, he, he had a powerful experience, got completely set free by Jesus Christ. And in a sense, I'd say that was, that was a spiritual healing, you know, because I was, I was dead in sin, but now I became alive in Christ. Yeah. Um, you know, it was, it was a healing in my, in something like my lifestyle as well, because, you know, I used to do things, mm. uh, you know, that was completely contrary to the kingdom of God. And now I'm having this, this experience with Christ. It's completely changed the course of my life. I literally stopped swearing, you know, just like that. Yeah. I, um, yeah. you know, uh, for people, you know, it's a process, but for me, it was, it was just instant. Mm. I deleted all the music that I had on my phone. Like for me, like that was the first beginning. Now, one of the first miracles that I personally witnessed was my brother. Now he had um, a condition called IBS, which is quite common today. Many people suffer with IBS and, and stuff like that. And what made it even more worse was that he was a diabetic. Mm. Um, so as a diabetic, you need carbohydrates to, to maintain your sugar levels because um, otherwise you can go into having a hypo um, so so the things that, that he would need to eat were the same things that would also you know kick off his IBS that would trigger his IBS so stuff like potatoes bread uh, I believe pasta or rice can't remember if they were the ones but anyway like stuff like usual things that people would normally be able to eat so now he was being affected by this, which would limit his diet. Now, being a diabetic, you know, it's very important with what you eat. So he, he was suffering like this for a long time. He then had to buy the more expensive food. So getting IBS, you know, the, the, the gluten, wheat, free stuff, like it was more pricier than your standard food. So anyway, we went to a revival service and, uh, you know, he just went believing in faith, you know, that Jesus uh, would reach out and touch him and heal him. So he went out the front for prayer. Uh, he got prayed for. You know, there's no lightning from heaven. There's no flashes. There's no thunder. Just a simple prayer, prayer of faith. And, you know, he didn't fall on the floor. There's no exuberance or, you know, yeah. screaming or shouting. He just quietly went back to his seat after being prayed for. And he said, you know what? He said, I'm going to go home. I'm going to try 
to eat something that I usually wouldn't be able to eat. Mm. So he went home and I think he, he had like bread and potatoes and stuff. And his stomach no longer reacted and he got completely healed right there and then. Wow. So that was, that was my first experience of, of healing. So the first experience that I had, right, well, I, I, I think I had been a Christian for four or five months mm. and I was a, a, a youth leader at the church that um, I, I used to go to and the youth pastor asked the youth leaders to pray for the youth, like to lay hands on them and, and pray for the youth. And it, it was the first time that I had done anything like this like I've, I've prayed for people but never sort of with them as in laying my hands up on them and and praying in front of them um it it, it had been the first time um i had had been asked to do anything like that and 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 um when he asked us to do that i was like uh, how do i do this what do i even say like i, mm. I don't know what what i'm doing here um, but then I just went up to the, the youth member and, and then I just asked him, you know, if there's anything that he, he wants me to pray for, he answered. And then I just spoke, I, uh, I, I just spoke in faith. Um, and at the time I, I personally didn't experience anything. I didn't feel anything. There was no fire in my hands. I, I, I didn't feel any type of unusual feeling in me at all um and, and then i ended the prayer and yeah that was it and mm -hmm. and then i went home and i didn't really think anything else of it but then the next day or the next week um i saw him again and he came up to me and said whilst i was praying for him that time that he he physically felt the the issue that he had leave him and, and that 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 after the prayer um he in fact was healed of the thing that he had wow. and that was was just a strange a strange sort of thing for me to hear because i couldn't i couldn't say that i did anything like mm -hmm. i didn't feel differently i didn't i didn't experience anything new i just prayed in faith mm. and then he ended up experiencing healing but it wasn't really anything to do with me it, it was mm. just i was a, a vessel of faith right and, yeah and that was my first ever experience no absolutely uh you know and um, one thing that i've um I think people should know, and I think it was Reinhard Bonnke that said this, he said, like, sickness isn't the ultimate enemy. Mm. You know, like, people can get healed and they can still end up in a lost eternity. They can still end up in hell, etc., separated from God. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, like, sin is the ultimate enemy because you, you, once you give your life to Christ and you, you get saved, you know, you have that eter eternal hope and assurance that that's not based on circumstances, but based on, you know, you, your faith in Jesus Christ. However, you know, Ronald Bonke, he saw incredible miracles. I know you're, you're reading his autobiography yeah, right yeah. now. And, uh, you know, I've read it for the, I've almost finished reading it for the third time. And, uh, you know, it's absolutely incredible. One thing that I noticed in the Bible, you know, mainly in John's gospel, yeah. is that um, the, the miracles that Jesus does, they're referred to as signs. Mm, you know, exactly. they're, they're signs of the demonstration of the kingdom of god that you know mm. jesus says repent the word repent means to change it means to mm. turn it says repent for the kingdom of god is near and you know he talks about john's gospel it gives seven signs and basically signs point somewhere mm -hmm. so the miracles are always designed to point people to jesus yeah. you know yeah. to show that god loves you god cares for you but he doesn't just want to leave it there you know, we, we hear of that story in the Bible where, you know, Jesus from a distance, he healed 10 letters. Mm -hmm. Not only one came back to say thank you, yeah. the, the other nine. And Jesus said, well, where are the other nine? And some people will take their healing and they'll leave. And the thing is, the, the, great, the great thing about God is he, even though 
they may they may not turn to him. They may not surrender their life to him. He doesn't withdraw that healing because he, he's not based on conditions. You know, God loves him and God wants to demonstrate his love. So their signs ultimately healing is to point and to, to show. You know, Jesus said to to, to to the followers, to the disciples, he said, he said, if you don't believe what I'm saying, you know, at least believe the signs for themselves because they, they testify of who I am. Uh, so, yeah. And then there are signs. So another miracle that I saw, and it, this was a great encouragement to me, and this was the, I believe this was the first miracle that God ever worked through me, is that I, I'd been at a conference I'm just going to look through my phone right now to find the picture. I was at a conference in Cambridge and it was a healing. It was sort of like a healing and evangelism conference. And uh, there was a man by the name of Jonathan Conrad speaking. And um, basically, like, you know, people were getting healed in this meeting. Like, there was a lady that was deaf in her ear, her ear open, like she received hearing. Um, there was a person that had a leg shorter than the other, probably by about a centimetre, I think. And he got prayed for and it grew. So I wondered what it looked like for a leg to, to grow out. Uh, so he said, oh, he said, stretch out your legs and I'll demonstrate. So I stretched out my legs and, you know, I found out that I had a leg shorter than the other, probably by about a centimetre. And I've actually got a before and after picture of the miracle. And he's like, can I pray for you? And I said, yes. So he prayed for me and I felt my leg actually growing. I felt it like stretching and pulling out. And, you know, he'd finished praying for me in about a minute, two minutes, and my leg had grown, and they're both the same size. So I've got the picture, and I'll show you that now. So the one, I think it's this one. Yeah. That's the before you can, you can yeah, see the yeah. difference. And then the one after is the miracle where my leg had grown. So you can, you can see the difference of mm -hmm. probably wow. about a centimetre or so. So that, that was the first miracle that happened to me. And my faith was just inspired. I had church the next day. I remember going to church in Rotherham and um, I, was, I was telling people about what had happened. And one of the people that I was telling said to me, so Jay, she said, I've got a leg shorter than the other. And his, his was a lot bigger difference than mine. It was about an inch. And I said, oh, I said, can I pray for you? And he said, yes. So I said, right, sit down and stretch out your legs. So he sat down and stretched out his legs. And the difference on his leg was probably about an inch. It was probably about yeah. that big. He had to wear like a sole in his foot to make mm -hmm. up the difference. So I stretched out his legs and I started praying for him for about two, three minutes and nothing was happening at first, but I just persevered. And eventually his leg just literally just started to grow right before wow. our very eyes to, yeah. the, to the point wow. it was exactly the same size. And he gets up and he says, I feel different. And I said, you, you should, your legs just grow. And he said, well, I need to go home and check it. So he went home, he measured his leg and he confirmed with me the following week that his leg had grown. And then I believe six months later, he went to the doctors and the doctors also confirmed that his leg had also yeah. grew. So, so that, was, that was something I'd experienced and I'd also prayed for, for God, you know, and God worked through me for someone else. So I think, uh, you know, uh, in, in terms of the context of witnessing to the world, you know, I, I think we shouldn't alone just pray for the sick. I believe if you pray for the sick, always give the gospel. Mm. Like you should never just pray for healing and leave it there. You know, always give them, you know, the healing, the need for their soul. But in terms of the skepticism and, you know, I find a lot of skepticism in, you know, my own lifestyle of evangelism and even just speaking to people about healing. And they've said to me, you know, Jay, I'm, 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 I'm really skeptical of that kind of stuff. I mean, I was even talking to my uncle about healing just yesterday. Oh, really? And, uh, yeah, yeah, and I told him about um, one of the miracles in Reinhard Bonnke's book uh, that actually happened at the NEC in Birmingham yeah. uh, with a lady by the name of Jean Neal. And the thing is, you can actually search, search this up on YouTube. There's a, there's a live video of this miracle. And, um, and he said, you know, I'm, I'm, skepti I'm skeptical of these things. And the, the typical westernized person Mm. He's skeptical of miracles of God. You know, maybe maybe for a few reasons, but I would say primarily it's not necessarily because, you know, they, they don't believe or that they, they don't want to believe. I believe it's because if they see a miracle, mm. or, you know, they, they, they see that then God is real, which then means they have to do something about their current situation of their life. And, yeah. you know, not many people are willing to face up to that reality. You know, not many people are, are willing to acknowledge that God exists because many people willingly know that if they confess that God exists, it means there must be some change that begins, that needs to happen in their life. And people are not willing to do that simply. 
So, and I'd say that's literally uh, one of the one of the reasons over here because people want to put their trust in you know pleasure and and good times and money and all these stuff. You know, it's what they want to recline upon. But um, I think you know, even in this generation, you know, we still have to somehow keep penetrating in with the gospel. We must remember. You know, I love what Billy Graham said. He said, I never say that I have led anyone to Christ. He said, there are many factors, you know, that play into that part. He says, I, I've just been a small part in it. You know, the Best. Apostle Paul in First Corinthians, he says, you know, one souls, another one reaps. Jesus says, I think it's in the Gospel of Mark or the Gospel of John. He said, you know, you, you are reaping what you have not sown. So, like, it's never just solely based upon one person, yeah. uh, you know, but we, we must continue... Um, to, to declare the gospel in this Western world because, you know, it's only the spirit of God that convicts people, mm. you know, mm. and I'm a result of conviction and, you know, giving my life to Christ and other people have came under conviction and he does the convicting and, you know, and it draws people to the cross where, where obviously where they meet him. Um, I would say for me, um, you know, and I said it to someone on Facebook earlier, is they, they said, you know, that the church has become from the evil it's corrupted it's sort of like lost it's lost its way if you will and um you know i said to him i said don't look to people you know is to get your image of god or, or your view of god you know because in in romans in the bible it says about the jews that the name of god is blasphemed talked bad of amongst the non-believers because of the image that they've painted mm. you know to them of god mm. and in the same way you know like for me back in those days you know um i'd always base my you know get everything from what the bible says like this has to be the foundation you know if people you know the bible says in the book of acts that the bereans it says that you know after paul had finished preaching to them he says that they went home to, to search the scriptures to see yeah. if these things were true, true yeah. and i think you know we we can be very naive if we just sort of take people at their word mm. you know so like you look it up get into the word of god you know what what does the bible have to say when it comes to things i'm like i've right okay but what what does the bible say mm -hmm. you know people can tell me i think well, okay but what does what does the word of god say mm -hmm. for me this this is you know this is the final so excuse me this is god's final say you know it's in here and god you know won't do anything or you know for someone that's you know in like speaking say on behalf of god or you know working miracles on behalf of god you know it won't be anything that contradicts his word because if it contradicts his word it's, it's not of god so for me you know there's even when i you know when i started you know my life as a christian you know there's a lot of bad teaching out there there's a lot of misleading teaching out there but like once you get into your word because i started to get into the word and you know i'll be lined up right okay but you know but what does it say in the bible does it line up so I think that every single person, even non-believers, you know, like whatever you see, like, you know, go, go to the Bible, you know, mm -hmm. what does it say in here? Yeah, I would say, um, I would say this, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, uh, verses 7 through to, through to 11, and then I'll make one more comment. And he says this, now to each one, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good to one there is given through the spirit a message of wisdom to another a message of knowledge by means of the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit to another gifts of healing by that one spirit to another miraculous power to another prophecy to another di the distinguishing or discerning of spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues or languages and to still another the interpretation of those tongues or languages. All these are the work of one and the same spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So people think that maybe one person has a gift of healing. However, when it says gifts, when you have that gift and you give it, it's no longer yours because it's already been given. And if we had the authority to, to heal people, every single person that gets prayed for should be completely healed, you know, but it, it's not always, you know, the case, you know. And um, lastly, I'll say for people that want to pray for people and see people healed, in Matthew chapter 28, you know, before Jesus, you know, goes back to heaven to be with the Father, he says, behold, 
all authority on heaven and on earth has been given to who? Been given to me. When I say me, I mean Jesus. Uh, and he says, therefore, you go and I will be with you. So we don't have the authority. He does. And he promises to be with us. And now that's a good thing. That means that I don't have to rely upon myself to sort of be able to conjure up dealing. In fact, guys, for any single person, you know, Christian, non-Christian, maybe you'd like to receive healing, don't put your faith in us. We can't do nothing. Mm. You know, put your faith in Jesus Christ. He's the one who is able to heal you. And the Spirit gives those gifts as he wills. So he does the distributing. I'm reminded of a, a scripture in uh, John where Jesus says, I do only what I see the Father doing. Mm. So he doesn't even operate in his own world. You know, we mm. see in the Old Testament, I believe it's in Second Kings, where Elisha, you know, the great prophet saw many miracles. You know, Elisha also died of an illness. You know, Paul, the great apostle, he said, you know, Satan has put a thorn in my flesh. You know, and Galatians would suggest that he had eye problems. You know, Timothy, Paul said to Timothy, he said, drink a little wine. This was like a medicine. He said to sort of like ease your stomach pain. Yeah, yeah. So like you, you can see, you can see um, even in the Bible, great men of God that had sickness. You know, some of Paul's traveling companions, you know, uh, Paul says they were sick almost unto death. Mm. You know, and even, even, you know, Jesus, he says, um, I believe it's in Matthew 24, 25, where, where Jesus is saying, when I was, when I was in prison, you visited me. When I was thirsty, you gave me a drink. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was naked, you clothed me. And then he goes on to say this. Not many Christians would be able to do the follow-up line. He said, when I was sick, and many people say, you healed me. But he, he doesn't actually say that. He said, you looked after me. Mm. Like, even in sickness, you know, there's an opportunity for people to demonstrate the love of God mm. by caring for someone. Yeah, yeah. And I would say that all things work together for the glory of God. You know, and don't doubt God just because maybe you don't get healed. You know, that doesn't mean to say that he doesn't exist. You know, we don't know his, all, his will or his ways. But we know that God works all things together for good for those who love him. Reinhard Bonnke, I think, recently died of cancer. But he saw the dead raised. He saw miracles, like all kinds of miracles. So millions come to Christ. And, you know, he also died of cancer. My apologies, guys. The ending of the video got a little bit messed up. But I want to take this time to thank Jay for taking the time out of your day to come and bless us, really. So, Jay, thank you. And I pray that God blesses you and helps you with everything that you're doing at the moment. So thank you once again for that. And to anyone who is watching who doesn't know God, um, I promise you that God is a healer. Um, I've seen it with my own eyes. I've seen it firsthand. And the thing is, healing is not even the best part. The best part is that there's a God who loves us and a, a God who wants to get to know you. And he's revealed himself through Jesus, who was God manifested in the flesh. And just like any crime on earth, any crime at all, um, there's always a penalty for that crime. Some crimes, um, the penalty is death. And the thing is, mankind is guilty of a particular crime. Mankind is guilty of sin, which is a crime against God. And we've all lied, we've all stolen, we've all called the Lord's name in vain. But, and none of us can say that we're perfect. But God said that even though there must be a punishment for this crime because justice means that no crime should go unpunished so because there must be a punishment for this crime he said you know what mankind doesn't have to pay for this crime i will come and i will bear the sin of mankind the penalty the punishment which is which was death so that they could go free so that's what happened he came and died for our sins jesus christ by the way is the most historically attested figure ever 
there's no historical figure um, who stands upon greater historical evidence than Jesus. So if Jesus did exist, which he did, then we should at least, I don't know, at least hear what he has to say because his words have eternal value and um, um, eternal meaning. And the thing is about Jesus is that he's still alive and he's waiting for you to call. So if you're someone who has never called upon him or you don't know him, then I promise you this will be the best thing that you ever do. So I'll leave it there. And I thank you guys for listening. And um, I hope that you will have a blessed week and a blessed day. Take care. It's me again Broken but alive Not abandoned My soul has no place in the grave How can the dead praise your name?